okay, it's been a little while since I've done one of these. My intention had been to do one like once a week or something to just kind of get stuff out, chat, talk, whatever. Um, pretty much because financial reasons, I stopped my counselor and the main purpose of the counselor, I think was, you know, basically to unload. And my thought process had been that I would then just do at least one of these a week in order to download. Yeah. Um, but then life got in the way. I've been too friggin' busy, haven't had a chance to even sit down and do this quietly and with no ears present. And that makes it a little more difficult. And I know it sounds funny without ears present if you're posting it because then there's many more ears than would have been here. But, you know, that's kind of how it goes. So um, let's see. I was about to say, since we last spoke, like, you know, I'm actually talking to somebody other than this green dot on my computer. Um, life's been kind of like this. It's a little crazy, had some good, some bad. I am probably about to, after this tiny recap, and this should be short, I'm going to do probably my first lockdown video where I might open it for just one or two people in order to have accountability for what I say, because I think that's kind of super important, accountability. Um, but I don't want it something just posted out there for, you know, all to see. Um, so I guess pretty much all I have right now is, um, well, we'll do my mom thing real quick had this issue, my mom cycles. I mean, I guess that's the best way to put it. She cycles. And I don't know why it's like in the universe, everything just wants to jump on you the same day. I, I don't get it. But on Thursday, this past Thursday, my mom wanted to talk to me and she had a bunch of different things to say. And some of which I had to actually stand up, not literally stand up, but you know, like stand up and tell her that that was not accurate because it was kind of hurtful. And she had cycled back around to the stage of how I hurt her and I don't do things right. And um, <clears throat> I'm kind of tired of being told by people around me that I need to stop doing so much. I need to think about myself, I need to rest. And then they also tell me how I don't do enough for them and how what they need is X, Y, Z and everybody, well, it's not everybody, it's just a couple of people, but still the same people who tell me I need to take time off and I'm supposed to put myself first are the exact same people who tell me that I'm not doing enough for them, that I need to cut everybody else down, but I still need to do this for them. And it's very confusing, very exhausting. I don't like the hypocrisy of it. Um, <clears throat> I just don't get it. And I don't understand why people can't just be nice, you know? Um, having my mom tell me that I don't do enough and it was like, first, she's trying to say something about way back when, when she used to visit how the kids and I didn't help her bring her stuff in from the car. And I stopped her right then and there and told her that um, it was 2007 was the only time she ever stayed at my place. And that's because I was doing armadillo research and she was staying there to, you know, be there with the kids while I was doing the armadillo research in Yazoo, Mississippi. Um, and we did help her. And then she said, well, like when I came down for Thanksgiving and I stayed there and I said, you didn't stay here. You were always at a hotel. I lived in the middle of nowhere. And she, I think only came down for one Thanksgiving. And that would be when I was really way out there. And it was like a 15, 
minute ride or so to get to the hotel, maybe 10. Um, if she arrived, it would take us a little bit to get there. She could wait. I pointed out that if this one, one of the times she was at the hotel, depending on when she arrived, because I was a single mom, my kids were not old enough to drive. I had a job and I went to school. And I told her if she arrived when I was at work or school, I was physically incapable of being there at the same time. Um, she kept insisting it was when she stayed at our house and I kept pointing out you only did it once because she kept trying to say no when you first moved in and I pointed out when I first moved in I didn't even have a bed because when I was gonna say when we left my now ex-husband but that's not true it's when I left and the kids had no choice in the matter and I still sometimes feel guilty about that but when we moved out, I had nothing. The stuff that I made sure to load into the moving van in the time crunch we had was all the stuff that belonged to the kids and the washer and the dryer so I could make sure we had clean laundry. I did not take my own bed, my dresser, anything. And so for a while, and I mean like over a year, living in that house, I didn't even have a bed. Um, I slept on the floor or on the couch for the first, I don't know how many months. Then I saved up and finally bought a mattress. Then I saved up and bought a box spring to put under the mattress. And then I finally got a bed. It was a good year or so before I had an actual bed. And so I told her there's no way she was staying at the place because where would she have slept? There was nowhere. Um, but it was just this kind of thing. And then she told me that then there was the, yeah, well, what you need to understand is when you say you're going to do something and you don't, it's hurtful to me. You don't do this. And I asked her if she was talking about that previous Monday when I asked Aliza to text her to tell her that since we're coming on Friday, asked if it would be okay if I didn't go right then. And um, she's like, yes, but it was very hurtful because I was looking forward to it. And I told her I was exhausted because the weekends tend to be stressful. I had just worked all day talking because I teach and I was so tired. My eyes were burning. I actually went home and went to sleep. I put something in the oven and completely forgot. I left the oven on and the food in the oven when I went to bed. Um, it was bad. I was like that tired but then I have to defend myself on all this. And then yesterday when I visit her, I mean, it ended better on Thursday. Uh, I had to stay there for like, I don't know, two hours or something. And I mean, I'm not meaning to be mean when I say had to, it's just the previous week we were there for seven hours. So then being told that I don't do enough while sitting in the apartment that I found after contacting so many places, bringing her to all the places. I did all of these things. I'm looking around at her furniture where I'm the one who brought her to the place to help her get the furniture to find the place. No, I didn't pay for it. But I do a lot of time through there and then to sit there and be told I don't do enough. God, it's exhausting. Now when I'm with her yesterday, um, she's talking about how she's, you know, what she's working on, trying to get through and she's dealing with and she's finally grieving the loss of her animals and uh, how she's better with animals than she is with people. And I know this, believe me, I know this all too well. Um, I tell her about an article I had read quite a few years ago that said, you know, if you have actually bonded really well with your pet, your animal, that the loss of the animal is similar to the loss of a child. My own mother, my mother, tells me she thinks it would be more than that for her. Um, basically that she, she grieves harder for the loss of her animal than she would for a child. At which point I pointed out that I am her child and I'm kind of, you know, hoping if I died, she would actually grieve me more than you know, I don't understand how people don't think 
about what they say. Um, and then of course I sit there and wonder what I've done wrong and how come, you know, that kind of thing. Ooh, that beside the point. Um, I've made the decision to quit looking at jobs and quit applying or considering applying to jobs because I've applied to another one. I interviewed this past Friday and I've already decided if I don't hear from them right off the bat, I'm just going to let it go because I don't think I need more jobs. Um, I'm tired and definitely need more money to come in because I want to let go of some jobs. I want to be able to truly have a day or two off. And my oldest Pax is constantly working and saying, it's okay, you just take it, take it. But at the same time, it doesn't feel right because he needs to be building up for his future. I don't need to keep taking from him either. Oh, didn't mean to get emotional. It was supposed to be very simple. Clearly I have a lot to get out, right? I guess the basic part is I'm just tired, so tired. And I keep thinking, yeah, this is why that, that no filter one's gonna be recorded soon. That one's gonna be pathetic. Um, randomly, I just sit there and think, I just sit there and think about that 1930s house in the middle of nowhere that I was a few weeks ago. Wonder how my little alligator's doing. No, he's not mine, but it, I chatted with him every day while I was there. Um, that has become my little safe place in my head and I go there often. I have had a lot in the past few days of just living in my own head, makes life a little easier. Um, yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna fill you on a couple other things, but no, I'm gonna wait until some other stuff, uh, till I get final answers about the other stuff. Then I'll, then I'll talk about it. I am excited and terrified that in August, I will be starting that other master's program. I have that where I'm excited at, you know, learning new stuff. I like learning. I think it's fun. Excited where it's going to take me and um, the possibility of all the different things I'll be able to do. That's pretty cool. But then at the same time, I'm absolutely terrified because what if it's too much? Um, I have that. What if I'm not smart enough? What if I can't retain the information? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, yeah. So a lot of self-doubt. Um, a lot of people who meet me probably don't realize how much I doubt every aspect of my life. I'm pretty good. I like to think I'm pretty good at seeming like, yeah, I got it. I don't, I don't like at all. Um, I want to. I'm probably a prime example of the fake it till you make it kind of person. Um, oh yeah, that was the other thing. My mom talked about how she had turned off her emotions a long time ago, how she didn't feel. And then she said, how could I have raised children if I didn't feel anything? And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, trust me, we, we knew this, um, you know. I have so many different things I wanna talk about, but I don't want to only hint at, and I don't want a lot of this to be public. And so probably about to end here, but on a positive note, we hired the kid next door to do some main things in the yard, like cutting down extra crap and, you know, things that our yard guy that we asked him to do has yet to get to, our yard guy, does the grass, does a great job, but for some reason never does the rest of the stuff that we've talked to him multiple times about doing. And so we hired the 13 year old next door and he's been doing it. And so little by little, our yard is looking better and better. So that's pretty cool. Um, oh, and I saw the Van Gogh immersive experience this past week and that was really cool. And I already want to go again. I thought it was phenomenal. If I had been there alone, I don't know how long I would have just stayed in that room 
I think I would have sat here for an entire cycle, then here for an entire cycle, then here for an entire cycle, and then here for an entire cycle. So I could see it from all angles. If there hadn't been people just randomly walking around, I might've just lay on the floor. Um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And if anyone is anywhere where that happens, totally go check it out. I think you would love it. And if you don't, what's wrong with you? Just kidding, kind of, not really. It was really good. Um, fell in love with one picture. Uh, I'm gonna look up the name because I sent it to somebody. I sent the one I fell in love with. Uh, this one right here. Yeah, I'm just gonna show you the picture. This one. This was the picture that I fell in love with and I want this, I want that picture. And I don't know if it really showed because something purple flashed on the screen. So hopefully it's there, uh, but it's like sorrow man or something. I don't know the name of it, but there was something about that image that spoke to me. And on the immersive thing, he was just rocking back and forth like this. And whew, I was just like, yes, I want this, but nothing in the gift shop about that one. Go figure. And they had a virtual reality thing, which was really cool. But the thing in there, sadly, the, the chair spun. And so I kept spinning to look around. And apparently I was looking at areas that didn't want me to. And it would like do arrows and an eyeball telling me to look. And then at one point I got totally immersed, literally, in my um, VR that all of a sudden I felt something cut across me here. And I realized it was the cord. And I had apparently done a full spin and forgot that, you know, I'm attached to something but it was cool um i think that's better better ending right so i guess that's it sorry for the <laughs> in the middle of there i just clearly have a lot i need to get out and i will do that later but first i am about to go chat with a friend and pace because i need some steps and um yeah that's it i guess till next time peace out <laughs>